Check this out. Easy procedural edge detection inside Unreal Engine. You can use this to add procedural edgeware to your materials and look how much better this looks. Or check this out. Use it to get procedural edge masking that you can use like this. All right, we're going to make this shader in Unreal, but first some quick background information so that you understand what we're doing. I'm going to show this in Blender because it'll be easy to explain, but we're going to make it in Unreal. Static meshes get shaded using vertex normals, and you can get this in the material graph in Unreal using vertex normal world space. If we look at this in Blender, I've turned on vertex normals, and you can see that when an object is flat shaded, it has perpendicular vertex normals. You can see there all the vertex normals are perpendicular to the faces that they belong to. But when you shade an object smooth, those vertex normals get averaged. And you can see here that these ones are straight, but now the ones that are going around a corner are not straight because they're getting averaged across adjacent faces. What that means is that if you have a sufficiently dense mesh that is smooth shaded, which most static meshes in Unreal Engine are, you can use this to detect where the beveled edges are because this vertex normal will be different from the adjacent face normals. So we need two things. We need the face normal and we need the vertex normal. If there's a difference between this face normal and the vertex normal, that will tell us where the edges on the object are. And we can use that as a mask in order to brighten or darken certain areas of the mesh that should have edge wear. The Unreal Engine material graph doesn't give us access to the face normals. It only gives us access to the vertex normals. So let's go ahead and see how we can address this and make our shader. All right, let's look at this inside Unreal Engine. So I have this pack of wooden objects that I'm making for the marketplace, and I'm going to include this wooden um, edgeware material as part of this in the next version. But first, let's grab a cube and just drop it in here. Or actually, what we want is a chamfer cube because it has bevels. And I'm going to create a material for it. So I'm just going to go right in the content folder and call this M underscore edge mask. And let's see how we can make this work. So the first thing let's look at is the vertex normals. So the vertex normals you can easily get in Unreal by just getting vertex normal world space and plugging it, plugging it in. So let's go ahead and plug this in. And what you'll see is that we have the we have the normals here, but the normals are in world space, not in object space, meaning that these are the normals of, of this object in the world. But if I rotate it, notice that the colors don't rotate with the object. So we actually want we actually want this relative to the um, relative to the object itself, not relative to the world coordinates. So let's go ahead and transform this. And we can just add a transform node. And go ahead in this drop down menu. And we just want to transform this from world space to local space and plug it in. And now you can see we have the vertex normals of the object and they are rotating if we rotate the object. Cool, that's great. We have the vertex normals. We don't have the we don't have the face normals yet. And I mentioned, right, if I go here and search right, there's no there's no way to get for face normals directly inside of the material graph. However, I'm going to paste this function in and you can make this. If you get the absolute world position, so right, absolute oops, search for world position and add that and plug this XYZ into a DDX and DDY node and get the cross products of this. So search for cross product and normalize the output of that. This is an approximation of the face normals. So this is, this is the second part we need. So this is our uh, vertex normals. And this is our face normals. And I mentioned, right, we can figure out where the edges are by comparing the world normals to the face normal or the vertex normals to the face normals. So we're almost there. The only problem is uh, this is also this is also going to be in. Oops. World space. And so like we did with the vertex normals, 
We also need to transform this from world space to local space. And so now the only thing we need to do is to compare these. So let's go ahead and get a distance node. And we're going to say, what is the distance between each vertex normal and the face normals, the approximated face normals? And let's go ahead and plug that into our, into our base color. And you can see right away on our chamfer cube, right, we have some edges being highlighted here. So we are, we are doing bevel detection. And this works on any object, works in any position if I rotate this, right? So that's great. This default chamfer cube doesn't have enough geometry on these flat faces, by the way, which is why you're getting this edge detection effect where it thinks that the edge is really large. And if I go ahead and put the same edge mask material that we just made onto a different object, you can see that it's detecting the edges much better. And that's because it has more dense geometry. So that's cool. We have a black and white mask that we can now use in order to blend between different materials on the edges versus everywhere else. So this is 90% of the way there. All right, so this is our edge mask, and there's not really anything left for us to do here other than to use it to lerp between the two colors that we want for you know everywhere else and then for the edges. So I'm gonna drag in a material. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a uh, linear interpolate. So let's add a lerp node. And what we'll do is we'll have one color for A and a darker color for B. And all we really need to do there is to multiply our albedo or diffuse color by uh, some, some uh, tint. So I'll just plug in, let's just make it like basically black and plug that into B. So we're going to mix between this light colored wood and this dark colored wood based on our mask as the alpha and then plug the lerp node into our base color. And it may be a bit hard to see. I'm going to make this, I actually just made this purple just for a second so that you can actually see the edges here. So you can see all the purple areas are where the edge mask is. And so if we make it, you know, black or whatever else, right? That adds a lot of depth to, to this. Like it looks a lot, it looks a lot more detailed than if we just had a flat, uh, flat albedo. And if you want emissive edges, all you have to do is plug in that mask that we created into a lerp node and then use a value of zero for A and a value of some color multiplied for B and plug that into the emissive output on your material. And so now, right, if we, let's say we make this blue, we'll get blue emissive edges on our, on our material. And if you like this video, uh, you know, like, subscribe, leave a comment. It really helps the channel and also lets me know that I should keep making more stuff. All right, that's it for now. See you next time.